being, and this is, a, 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 and this will play out oddly enough in your lab today. So, we talked about yesterday about mole to small. Okay, there's a version of that, which is there's the three stooges. There's Larry, Curly, and Mo. And so one version of Mo's Mall is that it's called Mo's Mall, okay? And this, they were famous for like their slapstick humor. And uh, like I said, this was typically done, this is like, a, this is even before my time, okay? Dinosaurs had just gone extinct, so it wasn't that all long ago. And so in the lab day, it was going to be like three different groups. So it's going to be the Larry group, the Curly group, and the Mo group, okay? Because it's going to be like a lab practical in terms of being able to do mold conversions. So just so you have some idea, this is one of those slices of Americana. So you have some idea, it's like, oh, the Finney Stooges, so they were famous going, nah, 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 nah. and so they what? do that a lot. Mold. Mold. Yeah. Mold. Even the sound is old. <laughs> Oh, I'd watch this one. Cute dog. <laughs> yeah, even the cars are old. Cars are old. The dog's on it. Hold on. <laughs> That's a better view than without their hats. <laughs> this was what's known as a slapstick humor. Wasn't the most sophisticated, but that was it. Okay, so. I just so you that so you have a reference for what is going to happen with Larry, Mo, and Curly when you get to the labs. No, you don't have to act them out or anything like that. But that's just one version of the uh, of the mall. Okay, speaking of the mall. So today, yes, we're going to have chips and guacamole because the next thing that you do with avocado's number is you call it avocado's number and then you take the avocados and you make it into guacamole. So we'll have chips and, guac chips and guacamole this morning if you want some. So let's chit chat about the assignment from yesterday and make sure everybody's cool with that process. So this, so you, the first thing you have to be able to do, and this is what things go south, is that you have to be able to, oh, we, we're recording, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have to be able to determine that what's called, sometimes you'll see it called grand formula weight, sometimes you see it called molar mass. Basically, you look on the periodic table and you find out what that mass is. So if it's just one element by itself, that's not a big deal. So like on number four, you got copper. Oh, that's 63.6 grams. Lithium, 6.94, okay? There you go, that's all you have to do. Where it gets a little bit complicated is when you have something like uh, that FeSO4. So, when you have FeSO4, so that's just one iron, one sulfur, and four oxygens. So, eventually we're gonna do what's called percent composition, and so, and eventually you're gonna to have to like know the mass of each individual part of this because we're gonna find like percentages. So if you wanna get in this habit of saying, hey, I'm just gonna write this out because eventually that's what you've got to do anyway. So here's the deal. What's the molar mass of iron? To, and you always wanna to go to at least the tenths place. So what's the molar mass of iron? 55. 55 what? 55.8. Okay, sulfur is 32.1, oxygen is 16, 16 times 4 is? 64. What? 64. 64, and then you add that all up, you get uh, whatever you get. 151.9? Yep. 
159.9. Now, technically, that's grams per mole. Okay? And th this is a huge thing to understand conceptually, is that if I go to Miles and I go, hey, Miles, go to the storeroom, I need one mole of iron sulfate, okay, or FESO4. I say, great. Now, again, if the scales measured in moles, and especially if they measured, and they would have to specifically measure in iron sulfate, Miles would just take the spoon and he would begin to add iron sulfate to the scale until it read exactly one mole, okay? He'd be done. He simple. He didn't have to do any conversions. If the scale measured specifically in moles of iron sulfate, okay? But unfortunately, we would have to have a scale for every different compound that we have in the chemical storeroom. We'd have to have one for iron sulfate, for aluminum sulfate, for ammonium sulfate, for lithium sulfate, for it would just be daunting, okay? Because we'd have to have one specific scale for everything. And I was like, ah, oh, that's not working. Okay, well, let's just do in grams. And again, it's, it's tough for me to emphasize how important it is that you understand this relationship. It's one of the, like, the key things that you have to understand. So when Miles goes, ah, oh, Miss Burkham, scale doesn't measure in moles. I said, Miles, what well, doesn't measure in He goes, ah, oh, measured in grams. Ah, oh, that's kind of cool. So if he comes in to the scale and he measures out 151.9 grams of iron sulfate, that's going to be one mole. So he can't measure one mole, but he can measure 151.9 grams. And when he gets 151.9 grams, oh, hey, now I have one mole. Okay, so that's what you have to understand. Now, so, and this is what you're gonna do in the lab. Okay, so you're gonna have your weighing dish and Miles would measure out 151.9 grams. And when he got to 151.9 grams, hey, he stops, gives it to me, and says, hey, Mr. Ricky, up here's one mole of iron sulfate up the store. Now, question being is that how many particles, and in this case, this is a, a metal and a non-metal. So we would talk about formula units. This is why I hate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Okay. Today happens to be my, my birthday. Oh, so what that is good. What now? It's a birthday. Why did you say that? Yeah. Well, it's not a birthday. It's Well, I brought chips and guac. <laughs> <laughs> so. A squirrel. <laughs> what? Ramen noodles. Okay. Now, so here's the deal. So if he has one mole of this, how many... Because it's an iron, FeSO4, okay? It's a metal and a non-metal, it's iron. Iron is like the quintessential metal. So you have a non metal and a non-metal. So how many formula units is he going to have within that one mole? What'd you say? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, okay? And it doesn't make any difference whether that's iron sulfate, whether that's aluminum sulfate, whether it's ammonium sulfate, if you have one, one mole of anything, it's always gonna contain the same number of particles. Just like if I have a dozen basketballs, I'm gonna have a dozen, I'm gonna have 12. If I have a dozen golf balls, I'm gonna have 12, okay? So that mole, there's like two sides to this mole thing. Not only is it a number of particles, and here's the tough part, it's also the relative atomic mass measured in grams, not pounds, not kilograms, not ounces. It only works when it's in grams, okay? So let's talk about number 5A. So you got 1.25 moles of carbon into grams. So this would be a situation, and again, I don't under, I don't, I do not care how you want to visualize this. If you like that visual, of saying here's moles, moles if you're into the three stooges, and here's your mass, and here's your parts. Okay? So if you're on the mass side, 
what do you have to look at? Periodic table. Periodic table. Okay. So if you're anywhere over here, you have to look at the periodic table. Okay? That's it. Now, if you're on this side, what do you have to walk by? Avocado. Avocado. The avocado stamp. And what number are you going to use? Avocado's number. Avocado's number. <laughs> 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay? Right? That's it. What's most important, and you remember this on the lab, you cannot go directly from mass into parts. Okay? There is no bridge that connects those two. What do you have to go through? Moles. Okay? You can't go mass to parts. You have to go from mass to moles to parts. Okay? Now you go, Mr. Burkamp, that's cool. I like the math side of it. Cool. We can talk about the math side of it. So on 5A, you got 1.25 moles of carbon. Now, the sooner you get used to writing down like what these elements are, the better off you're going to be. Because eventually, a long way down the line, we're going to do something called stoichiometry, which is a whole bunch of conversions like on steroids. And you have to know like what element are you dealing with or what compound are you dealing with. Are you dealing with water? Are you dealing with carbon dioxide? Are you dealing with whatever it is? And if you don't know what particular type of substance that is, you can't do the next step. Okay? So the sooner you, you, you get used to saying, okay, hey, this is carbon, right? And you don't have to write out the word carbon. You can just put C. That's the beauty of your table. So, and again, here's the deal. And again, I don't, there's two ways you can think this through. If you're a visual person, I'm starting here in moles. I'm going to go up to mass. I'm going to look at the periodic table. If I go from moles up, do I multiply or divide? Multiply. That's the deal, right? One mole of carbon contains how many grams of carbon? What's molar mass of carbon? Ramen. What's the molar mass of carbon? Like 12 or something? It's 12.0. Okay? So, here's what's going to be important. The moles cancel out, I get grams of carbon. Now, is my answer going to be bigger or smaller than 12? Mr. Peterman. Oh, uh, like how many moles are on? No, no. My answer in grams. Oh, yeah, it's going to be bigger. Why? Because you have more than one mole. Yeah, more than one mole. Okay, so I know my answer has to be bigger than 12. Okay? So, again, if I go to Izzy and say, hey, Izzy, I need 1.25 moles of carbon. She's going to Smirk camp. I can't measure moles. I said, what can you measure in grams? She said, I like that. Okay. So she can take those moles, change those into grams, then she can measure that up. You do the math, you get 15.0 grams. So if Izzy went and measured out 15.0 grams of carbon, put that. What's this? I really hard. <laughs> Put that on a scale. Did that for you? Says Mr. Burkamp. There you go. Fifteen point zero grams of carbon. Score. Okay. I'm uh, sorry. I didn't mean for that. Okay. All right. So on all of those, so like on five A and B, you're just going from molar mass from moles into grams. So on five B, that answer should be around one hundred and thirty. Okay. That's an ish, but it should be around 130. Now, when you get to C and D, okay, on C and D, I've given you mass, and you're going to figure out how many moles it is. So how this would play out is that I would go to Grace, and I'm going to give Grace 28.4 grams of copper. She weighs it out, 28.4 grams. I said, Grace. How many moles is that? So in that situation, she's starting up there at the restaurant, and she's coming down to moles. So if you're going up, you multiply. If you're going down, you divide. So she's going to look up that molar mass of copper. And so on that one, it's the same process. She's got 28.4 grams of copper. Molar mass of copper is 
And that's one mole. My answer is going to be less than one because I have less than 63.6 grams. Okay? All you have to do. Now, when you get to E, okay? So when you get to E, now you're going to be dealing with parts, okay? Atoms, molecules, formula units, okay? Those are going to be the big three. I know, those three. So I got 2.75. Why can I not write? Huh. <clears throat> now I can. Okay. I got 2.75 moles of lithium. And I want to figure out how many atoms there are. So one mole of lithium contains how many particles? Ellen, how many particles? Six, I mean, yeah, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, let me give you a word of advice okay, that, that shortcuts this process. Your calculators typically have a memory function on them where you can store a number. So on a, it's a TI, if you find a button that says stow, okay? So what you can do is type in 6.02 times 10 to the 20, 6.02 EE 23rd, just like you normally do. And then if you hit that store button, you can store it typically as a variable, okay? So like you could store it as A. Oh, that's Avogadro's number. That will just save you typing in 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd every time, okay? It's just a little shortcut. It's handy. If you want to do it, that's great. Now, the other shortcut that you can do, and, I, and, and I'm cool if you do this, you don't have to write out 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd every time. If you want to shortcut that and put a capital N with the subscript A, which, which is I know is Avogadro's number, okay? So if you want to do that instead of writing that out every time, if you just want to put in sub A, that's cool. I know what it is, okay? I know you all are capable of writing 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's not what I'm worried about. I'm, understand, I'm worried about, hey, do you understand that relationship? Okay, now, so you can take 2.75 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Make sure you're using that EE e key. So I want to make sure everybody has the right answer on 5E. You should have 1.656 times 10 to the 24th atoms. Okay? So that should be your answer on 5E. So that way you'll know, hey, am I punching my numbers right into the calculator? Okay? That's the answer that you should get. Now, would it make any difference? Would it make any difference? This, this is lithium atoms. Would this answer have changed, okay? Would this answer have changed if I had picked the element below lithium, which is sodium? You shake your head no. Why? Because they both have the same amount of particles in one Score, okay? Does not make any difference? Sodium, I could have picked magnesium, I could have picked water, I could have picked gold. Doesn't make any difference, okay? Does not make any difference. They're both going to have the same number of particles in them. Mass would be different, but that, that doesn't matter. Okay, so are we cool with that? Any other, any ones you want me to go over? And make sure on number six, here's what I'm looking for on number six, where I said, why would you never use 6.02 times 10 to the 24 grams in a conversion involving moles, okay? What is that, the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, there's a couple ways you can answer that. Does Avogadro's number refer to the number of grams that are in a mole? No. So one approach is you can say, Hey, that refers to the number of particles, not the amount of mass. That's an option, okay? You, you, you could appeal to a sense of logic and go 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd grams is more than the mass of the moon and we're never gonna weigh out that much stuff in a lab, okay? 
You could, do, you could go with that route. You say, it's just not practical. Well, I will never ask you to mention about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd grams because we'd have to go get the moon and some other stuff just to even get to that point, okay? So is everybody good with this? Yes, ma'am. Can you go over I? I can. So formula units, so here's the deal. So you got 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd formula units, okay? And formula units we just use when you have a metal and a non-metal, okay? So here's the deal. Formula units, molecules, atoms, ions, okay? These are all parts, okay? So how many parts are there in one mole? Like particle? Yeah. 6.02. There you go. So you're just going to go one mole contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, in this case, formula units. Okay? It's the same process. You're just going to take that and divide it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. There you go. Um. Now, is my answer going to be bigger or smaller than one mole? What? Because the bigger one is the denominator. Yeah. I have less than 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles, so therefore I'm going to have less than one mole. So it's the exact same process. I just called them formula units. If it had been water molecules, it would have been the same thing. Okay? Miles, are we good? Yeah. Okay. Anything else? at all, once, twice, so, so, get that in the room. Okay, so this is the next step, and this is what you've got to be able to do on the lab. So I want to make sure everybody's cool with this conversion. So let's say we're in the lab, and I'm going to give you 18 and a half grams of magnesium nitrate. Magnesium nitrate is a type of white kind of powder. It's pretty granular. And that's what you see a lot of the chemicals that we deal with tend to be white kind of powders. So I'm going to give ramen 18 and a half grams of magnesium nitrate. And I want her to be able to figure out how many formula units there are in that. Okay? So here's the deal. Well, if you look at like Moe's model, if you want to start with that idea, I'm starting here in mass. I want to end up over here. So what do I have to, can I do that? Can I do that in one conversion? No, I've got to have two. Two. two conversions. Okay. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to start with 18 and a half grams of magnesium nitrate. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is figure out what's going to happen when I go off by the periodic table. So I have to find the molar mass, brand formula weight, mass per mole, however you want to think of, of magnesium nitrate. So nitrates is going to be one that we're going to use a lot, okay? Because nitri all nitrates are soluble. What that means is that all nitrates will dissolve in water, okay? And they're one of the very, 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 very few substances that are always soluble. A lot of, a lot of them, they're, only, they're sometimes soluble. Nitrates, always soluble. So when we get into this concept of net ionic equations later on, just remember this, oh, all nitrates are soluble. So we're going to use nitrates a lot. 
So what I would recommend is if you look at that periodic table that I gave you that has like the boxes up there at the top, I would just write, we're going to figure out the molar mass of nitrate together, and then we're just going to have that, and then that will save you doing this calculation every time. Okay, so we're just going to figure out what a nit nitrate is. So nitrate is one nitrogen and three oxygens. So what's, Grace, what's the molar mass of nitrogen? Point zero. Peyton, what's the molar mass of oxygen? 16. But there's three of those. So we're going to take 16 times 3 and we're going to get 48. I take 14 and add that to 48. I get 62.0 grams per mole. So this will save you some hassle. You don't have to do this. I, if you look at the periodic table that I use, which is the same one that you all have, if you look on mine, like up by nitrate, I have written down 62.0, because that way I don't have to calculate it every time. That way I can just treat it as one thing, okay? So, in this situation, I've got <coughs> one magnesium, and I've got two nitrates, right? So, magnesium is 24.3, each nitrate is... <coughs> 62, add that together, I get, or times 2, I get 62 times 2 is 124, I think, that sounds right, little mental math, I get 3, 8, 4, 148.3, I think that's right, so here's the deal, so down here I'm going to put 148.3, grams of magnesium nitrate. <clears throat> and that's equal to one mole. So if I stop right now, what units do I have? If I don't do anything else, where am I at? The mass of magnesium nitrate? Not mass. If I don't, yeah, uh, right. grams gonna cancel out. What do I have left? Yeah. Moles, okay. So at this point, if I don't do anything else, if I just do this step, I just have moles, right? But that's not what I want, okay? I want to end up there in the parts store. So what do I have to do to get to the parts store? Multiply by? Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number. So then I'm going to go one more step and go, oh, one mole is Avogadro's number, okay? So... What you're going to do, and thank God for calculators, you're going to take 18 and a half, multiply that by Avogadro's number, and then you're going to divide that by 148.3. Okay? Now, before you do any math at all, Ethan, do I have more than a mole or less than a mole? Wait, no, more than one. No, 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 no. Wait. One mole is 148.3 grams. I don't have 18 and a half. I have less than one. Yeah, I'm going to have less than a mole, right? Because this is how many grams I would have to have to have an entire mole, right? I don't have 18 and a half. I have way, way less than one mole. I think somehow or another, the three sushi started playing. It's like, that was weird. I'm like, I'm, where is that noise coming from? Okay. <clears throat> so, this is how much I'd have to have to have one mole, right? <clears throat> I got a lot less than one mole, so therefore, I, or a <clears throat> lot less than that, so I'm going to have less than one mole. So, I know my answer then, when I multiply it by Avogadro's number, has to be less than 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So, don't be afraid, before you do the calculation, to step back and go, huh, where am I going to end up with this process? So, somebody take 18 and a half times Avogadro's number, and then divide that by 148.3. Let me know what you get. 
7.5 What'd you get? 7.5 <coughs> times 10 to the 22nd. Times 10 to the 22nd. Now, hopefully that makes sense. You go, oh, I have less than a mole, therefore my answer has to be less than 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay? <coughs> Got that. Good? Great? Okay. So, Okay. Now, so here's the deal. So, now, for, for whatever reason, my, I couldn't connect to my printer. I need you to make one small change. Let me see here. Where, now this is going to be true of all of you. So, down here on part C, where it says, the, the number on the metal, okay? And right now, all of you have the number one because I couldn't, I changed it, but I just couldn't print it out. So, on part C, if you have the Larry group, you're fine. You don't have to change it. You can leave that as number one. If you're the Mo group on part C, I want you to change that to metal number two. And if you're the Curly group, you guys get number three. So what's going to happen, I'll explain why this works. So you're going to have, I'm going to give you a piece of copper, like such, okay? So like if you have this one. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this, you're going to put it on the scale, and you're going to try and figure out the answer to this. So this is the one what you have to measure stuff out on. So let me see that. So what you're going to do on C, okay, you're going to come up, you're going to get the one that I give you, and then what you're going to do is that you're going to record that answer, and then you're going to tell me how many copper atoms are in that sample. Now, here's the deal. You're only going to hand in like one per group, okay? So since you're only handing in one per group, I want to be impressed, okay? The vast majority of your grade on this is the thoroughness of these calculations. So I want to see, hey, grams of copper, atoms of copper, okay? I want to see this step by step. So let me kind of take you through what's going to happen. So on A, here's your task. You're going to measure out however many moles of sodium chloride I'm going to give you. So let's say Ethan has 0.45 moles. So what Ethan's going to do, Ethan's going to figure out and show me, hey, Mr. Burkham, scales don't measure in moles. I see how you are, <coughs> but I know how to solve this. So what I'm going to see here is I'm going to see Ethan's conversion from moles into grams. And then Ethan's going to come up. We're going to find that mass of Sodium chloride. So what's going to happen is that you all are going to make, he's going to measure out that mass of sodium chloride that he thinks it is. He's going to bring that up to me in a cup. And it's, that cup's going to say sodium chloride on it. It's a styrofoam cup. He's going to come up and he's going to give me that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh that. So I'm going to have a separate weighing dish on the scale. I'm going to pour that in. And then we're going to see how close his measurement is <coughs> 
to what it should be. Okay? So I'm going to check two things. I'm going to check the thoroughness of your calculations, and I want to see things cancel out. Okay? I just don't want to see random numbers. I want to see units cancel out. I want to see moles of sodium chloride into grams of sodium chloride. Okay? So this is like a lab, what we call lab practical. You have to understand, I want to be impressed. Okay? Again, you're only handing in one of these per group. So you're going to try and impress me. Okay? It's like, oh, here, happy birthday. Be impressed. Okay? Now, when you get to B, B is probably the most complicated one. So if I'm Ethan, he's going to try and figure out how to put 2.52 times 10 to the 24th molecules of water into a graduate facility. Okay? Now, here's, the, here's your end task. In what units, you all have done this enough, in what units are your graduated cylinders measured in? Polyliters. Milliliters, right? <clears throat> so think this through. Now conveniently, remember this. The density of water is one gram per milliliter, okay? So one gr if you can figure out how many <coughs> grams you, of water that you need, that's how many milliliters of water that you need because the density of water is one gram per milliliter. Okay, so what he's got to do on this one, this is what we just showed. He's got to take molecules and end up in grams and then convert those grams into milliliters. Okay, that's going to be the step. When you get to C, that's that one. I'm going to give you a piece of metal. You're going to find the mass of it. You're going to do whatever you need to do to tell me how many atoms are in that. When you get to D, Okay, you're going to have, I want you to figure out, I want you to give me 6.13 times 10 to the 22nd atoms of aluminum. So with that one, you're going to have a container of aluminum shot. Now, because these are kind of chunky, you're you're not going to be able to get that to exactly like, let's say you need 0.4 or 5 grams of aluminum. Because those are so chunky, just get it close to what you need. The, the, my bigger thing that I'm looking for there <coughs> is the conversion. If you're, then the mass, hey, well, that'll take care of itself. And then, let me see that. And then on that last one, on D, you're going to measure out 0.0482 moles of ammonium sulfate. That's going to be put into a cup. You're going to bring it up to me. I'm going to pour it out. I'm going to measure it, and we'll see how close you are. Okay? <coughs> Got that. We're good. So, again, you're only, I cannot emphasize this enough, you're only handing in one per group, okay? Which means I, you have no idea how impressed I want to be. Okay, I want to see the convergence. I want to see, and just don't put grams. I need to see, hey, grams of what? Atoms of what? Milliliters of what? Okay, I want to be impressed. Then as soon as we get done, we'll come back over. We'll have chips and guac. All right, we're good. Ready to go? Great. So stop that camera. Hey guys, it's Sid here, back with another vlog, and today is Mr. Camp's birthday! And now I'll have a guacamole! Look at that! Yeah, Carter, how do you like your guacamole? I haven't even tried it. Oh, okay. Okay, I'm vlogging! What's that noise? Thank you guys for coming in today. that one up? Hey, look at the playing. birthday boy! Oh, get out of the way, Carter. <laughs> You're not the birthday boy. <laughs> wow. Birthday boy. Well, oh, okay. Anyways, goodbye, guys. I hope you put this on your YouTube channel. It's going to be great.